It's uh, AI is uh, either people are really excited about it or they're really terrified of it. Those are the sort of, it seems to be the two responses. Either people have this dismal view of these robots taking over the world or they think it's going to be some amazing sort of symbiotic relationship that we have with these things that's going to evolve human beings past the, the monkey stage that we're at right now. Yeah, and I, I tend to be on the latter, more positive side of, of, of this dichotomy. But I, I think one thing that has struck me in recent years is many people are now, you know, mentally confronting all the issues regarding AI for the first time. And I, I mean, I've been working on AI for three decades, and I first started thinking about AI when I was a little kid in the early late 60s and early 70s when I saw AIs and robots on the original Star Trek. So I guess I've had a lot of cycles to process the positives and, and negatives of it, where it's now like suddenly m most of the world is thinking through all this for the, first, for the first time. And, you know, when you first wrap your brain around the idea that there may be creatures 10,000 or a million times smarter than, than human beings. At first, this is a bit of a shocker, right? And, yeah. and then, I mean, it takes a while to internalize this into your worldview. Well, it's that there's also, I think, there's a problem with the term artificial intelligence because it's, it's, it's intelligent. It's there. It's a real thing. Yeah. Like, it's not artificial. It's not like a fake diamond or a fake Ferrari. It's a real thing. And it... It it's not a great term, right. and there's been many attempts to replace it with synthetic intelligence, for, mm. for example. Right. But for better or worse, like AI is there. It's part yeah. of the popular imagination. It seems it's an imperfect word, but it's, it's not going away. Well, I, I, my question is, like, are we married to this idea of intelligence and of life being biological, being carbon-based tissue and cells and blood and... Or, or insects or mammals or fish? Or, are we married to that too much? Do you think that it's entirely possible that what human beings are doing and what people that are at the, the tip of AI right now that are really pushing the technology, what they're doing is really creating a new life form, that it's, it's going to be a new thing, that just the same way we recognize wasps and buffaloes and Artificial intelligence is just going to be a life form that emerges from the creativity and ingenuity of human beings. Well, in, in, indeed. So, I mean, I've long been uh, an advocate of a philosophy I think of as, as patternism. Like, it's the pattern of organization that appears to be the, the, the critical thing. And, the, the you know, the individual cells and going down further, like the molecules and particles in our body are, are turning over all the time. So it's mm. not the specific combination of elementary particles, which makes me who I am or makes you who you are. It's a pattern by which they're organized and the patterns by which they change over time. So, it, I mean, if we can create digital systems or quantum computers or femto computers or whatever it is manifesting the patterns of organization that constitute intelligence i mean then then there you are there there there's intelligence right so that that's not to say that you know consciousness and experience is just about patterns of organization there may be more dimensions to it but when when you look at what constitutes intelligence thinking cognition problem solving you know it's the pattern of organization not not the specific material as 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 far as we can tell so we can see no reason based on all the science that we know so far that you couldn't make an intelligent system out of some other form of matter rather than the, the specific types of atoms and molecules that, that that make up human beings and it seems that we're we're well on the way to being able to do so when you're studying uh, when you're studying intelligence you're studying artificial intelligence do you, did you spend any time uh, studying the patterns that insects seem to cooperatively uh, behave with, like uh, how leafcutter ants build these elaborate structures underground and, you know, wasps build these giant colonies. And did you study how... I did, actually, yes. So I, I, I sort of grew up with the philosophy of complex systems, which was championed by the, by the Santa Fe Institute in, in, in the 1980s. And the whole concept that there's an interdisciplinary complex system science, which includes, you know, biology, 
cosmology, psychology, sociology, there's sort of universal patterns of, of self-organization. And, you know, ants and ant colonies have long been a paradigm case for that. And I, 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 I used to play with the ant colonies in my backyard when, when, I, when I was a kid, and you'd lay down food in certain patterns. You'd see how the ants are laying down pheromones, and the colonies are, are organizing it in a, in a certain way. And that's an interesting self-organizing complex system on its own, it's lacking some types of adaptive intelligence that, that human minds and human societies have, but, but it has also interesting self-organizing patterns. This reminds me of the, the novel Solaris by Stanislaw Lem, which was published in, in, in the 60s, which was really quite, quite, quite a deep novel, much deeper than the, the movie that was made of it. Did you ever read that book, Solaris? No, so no. what? I'm not familiar with the movie either. Who, who's in um, the movie? Well, so there was an amazing, brilliant movie by Tarkovsky, the Russian director from the late 60s. Then there was a, a movie by Steven Soderbergh, which was sort of glammed up and Americanized. And oh, that was fairly recent, right? Yeah, yeah. 10 years ago. But that, that, yeah. that, that wasn't, didn't get all the deep points of the novel. The original novel, in essence, there's this, it, there's this ocean on coding the surface of some alien planet, which has amazingly complex fractal patterns of organization, and it's also interactive, like the patterns of organization on the ocean respond based on, on what you do, and when people get near the ocean, it causes them to hallucinate things, and even causes them to see simulacra of people from their past, even the, like the person who they had most harmed or injured in their past Whoa. appears and interacts with them, so clearly this ocean has some type of amazing complexity and intelligence from the patterns it displays and from the weird things it wreaks in your mind so that the people on earth try to understand how the ocean is thinking they send a scientific expedition there to to in interact with that ocean but it's just so alien even though it monkeys with people's minds and clearly is doing complex things no two-way communication is ever is ever established, and eventually, the the human expedition gives up and goes home. So it, it, it's a very Russian ending to the novel. I, 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 I guess it's not. I think so, I saw that. But that the the the, interest, the interesting message there is, I mean, there can be many many kinds of intelligence, right? I mean, human intelligence is one thing. The intelligence of an ant colony is a different thing. The intelligence of human society is a different thing. Ecosystem yeah. is a different thing. And there could be many, many types of AIs that we could build with many, many different properties. Some could be wonderful to human beings. Some could be horrible to human beings. Some could just be alien minds that, that we can't even relate 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 to very very well so we we have a very limited conception of what an intelligence is if we just think by close analogy to to human minds and this this is important if you're thinking about engineering or growing artificial life forms or artificial minds because it, it's not just can we do this it's what kind of mind are, are, are we going to engineer or evolve? And right. there's, a, there's a huge spectrum of possibilities. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I asked you that. If we had created, if human beings had created some sort of an insect, and this insect started organizing and developing these complex colonies like a leafcutter ant and building these structures underground, people would go crazy. They would panic. They would think these things are organizing. They're going to they're gonna build up their resources and attack us. They're going to try to take over humanity. I mean, this, what, what people are worried about more than anything when it comes to technology, I think, is the idea that we're going to be uh, irrelevant, that we're going to be uh, antiques, and that something new and better is going to take our place, which is, it's a weird which is thing to worry inevitable. about. Which is almost inevitable. Yeah, it's a weird thing to worry <laughs> about it because it's sort of the history of biological life on Earth. I mean, what yeah. we know is there's complex things. They become more complex. We go single-celled organisms to multi-celled organisms. There seems to be a pattern leading up to us, and us with this unprecedented ability to change our environment. That's what we can do, right? We can manipulate things, poison the environment. We can blow up entire countries with bombs if we'd like to, and we can also do wild creative things like send signals through space and land on someone else's phone on the other side of the world almost instantaneously. We have incredible power, but we're also – 
we're also so limited by our biology. Yeah. The thing I think people are afraid of, and I, I'm afraid of, but I don't know if it makes any sense, is that the next level of life, whatever artificial life is or whatever the, 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 the human symbiote is, that it's going to lack emotions, it's going to lack desires and needs and all the things that we think are special about us. Our creativity, our desire for attention and love, all of our camaraderie, all these different things that are sort of programmed into us with, with our genetics in order to advance our species, that we, we, we're so connected to these things, but they're so, they're the reason for war, they're the reason for lies, deception, th thievery. There's so many things that are built into being a person that are responsible for all the woes of humanity. But we're afraid to lose those Yeah, things. I think it, it's almost inevitable by this point that humanity is going to create synthetic intelligences with tremendously greater general intelligence and practical capability than human beings have. I mean, I think I know how to do that with the software I'm working on with my own team. But if we fail, you know, there's a load of other teams who I think are a bit behind us, but are going in the same direction now, so right? So you guys so, feel like you're at the tip of the spear with this stuff? I do, but I also think that's not the most important thing from a human perspective. The most important thing is that humanity as a whole is quite close to this, this threshold event, right? So How far do you think it's quite close? By my own gut feeling, five to 30 years, let's say. That's pretty close. But if I'm wrong and it's 100 years, like in the historical time scale... That sort of doesn't matter. It's like, did the Sumerians create civilization 10,000 or 10,050 years ago? Like, right. what, what difference does it make, right? So right. I think we're quite close to creating superhuman artificial general intelligence. And that's, in a way, almost inevitable, given where we are now. On the other hand, I think we still have some agency regarding whether... This comes out in a way that, you know, respects human values and culture, which are important to us now, given who and what we are, yeah. or that is essentially indifferent to human values and, and culture in the same way that we're mostly indifferent to chimpanzee values and, and culture at, at, right. at, at, at this point. And Though, I mean, completely indifferent to insect values and culture. Not completely, but I, if you think about it. I mean, if I'm building a new house... I will bulldoze a bunch of ants, but yet we get upset if we extinct an insect species, right? So we we care we care yeah. to some level, but not but we but we would like the super AIs to care about us more than we care about insects or or great apes. Sure. A, a, yeah. a, 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 absolutely, right? And I think this this is something we can impact right now and to 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 be honest, I mean in a certain part of my mind I I can think well like, in, in the end, I don't matter that much. My four kids don't matter that much. My granddaughter doesn't matter that much. Like, we are patterns of organization in a very long lineage of patterns of organization. But they matter very much to you. Yeah, and, and right. other, you know, dinosaurs came and went, and Neanderthals came and went. Humans may come and go. The AIs that we create may come and go, and that's the nature of the universe. But on the other hand, of course... In my heart, from my situated perspective as an individual human, like if if some AI tried to annihilate my my ten month old son, I would try to kill that AI, right? Like right. so, a, a, sure. as as a human being uh, situated in this specific you know species, place, and time, I care a lot about the condition of of all of us humans, and so I, I would like to not only create. A powerful general intelligence, but but create one which which is is going to be beneficial to humans and and other life forms on on the planet, even while in some ways going going beyond every, everything that that we are right. And there can't be any guarantees about something like this. On the other hand, humanity has really never had any guarantees about anything anyway, right? I mean, since since since. Since we created civilization, we've been leaping into the unknown one time after the other in, in a somewhat conscious and self-aware way about it from, 
you know, agriculture to language to math to the Industrial Revolution. We're leaping into the unknown all the time, which is part of why we're where we are today instead of just another animal species, right? So we can't have a guarantee that AGIs, artificial general intelligences we create, are going to do what we consider the right thing, given our current value systems. On, on the other hand, I suspect we can bias the odds in the favor of, of human values and, and culture, and that's something I've I've put a lot of thought and work into alongside the, you know, the basic algorithms of, of artificial cognition. 